Hello, YouTube. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Could I Change? Today, we're going to be talking about Graham Linhan and Rosanna Lockwood. They had an interview yesterday, uh, and people seem to be up in arms about it. So, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. If you want to like and subscribe after you see this video, please do. If you don't, that's fine. We're working our way towards the soundboard here to work on our sound and just get a little bit better here. So, if you want to help to that, you can donate. This channel is completely community-funded, so I appreciate you guys. All right, let's hop right into the video. And then we're going to read a little bit about the person who posted this. So um, here we go. This is the, so this is actually a 13 minute interview. Uh, there's more people in it, but obviously I'm just going to show you all the section that people are up in arms about. And then we'll talk about the whole thing. So let me take Graham. In Robin's tweets. Graham. Name one trans rights activist. Let's bring in. Let's bring in. Let's br well, look, can I just ask you this actually before we go? Do you regret having taken this path? Because you seem to have taken a more and more extreme path over the last few years. How, how is it extreme? Your, the views you've just expressed, most people would ca call those extreme. When you start, you think it's extreme to be an anti pedophile who has got who is at the heart of the Those are allegations. Once again, this community. is a news program. These people aren't here These to defend themselves. These are not themselves. allegations. These are being reported. I did not report my, if I, if I, if, and when have I been? I'm being sued by a, a trans rights activist named David Paisley. The last trans rights activist who sued me was Stephanie Hayden. Stephanie Hayden is a criminal. Graham, David Paisley Graham, is a man in who, which case... who destroyed a gay magazine called Boys Magazine, destroyed the livelihood of its editor, David Bridal, and all of this is readily available online. And in which you case, if you are in... Graham, if you... understanding the subject... If you're in active you legal in proceedings, deciding, Graham, I'm going to cut, cut away for your you own good. Me. I'm going to cut away for your own good just so that we don't amazing, get you into any further amazing, le deeper legal... Amazing, it's not amazing. When... Right there is what people were upset about. Um, so first, I'm going to give my opinion on this section, and then we'll actually hear from Rosanna Lockwood herself. So number one, the reason it sounded like, well, clearly, I know, but the reason she's cut away is because he was putting people's names and calling them a criminal, and he was pursuing legal action. If you run a broadcast, if you run a national, something that is shown nationally, we even see this stuff here in America, if you run, uh, not just nationally, I mean globally, if you watch this kind of stuff, you cannot allow somebody to get on there and start defaming somebody they that is not there to defend themselves. It's one thing if it's in court, it's been, uh, it's not allegations, it's not accusations, it has happened. It's in the court, this person has been sentenced or this person has lost the case, something like that. For example, I'm going to name somebody y'all know who's probably famous. If I was to get on here and say, I think that Moist Critical is... Uh, he has done things to children. I don't even say that. I say, Morse Critical has done things to children. He should be in jail. In fact, he sued uh, Brittany Venti, and she lost She lost the case. And now Moist Critical is making millions and millions of dollars off of just constantly doing things that are criminal, uh, copyright striking people, and he's just an awful person. If I got on the news and said that, it would be bad for the person who's running the show to allow me to just go off on people and defame people when those are just accusations, when there is no proof that Moist Critical has done anything to anybody like that. There is no, there's nothing to say that he's had a court case against Brittany Venti and he, she lost. I can't say those kind of things and not have any proof and be on national TV and say those things. That is the reason she cut him off. I'm sure there is... They have free reign there from what she says. So she may have made that decision herself or there are people in her ears saying that. But at some point, you got to have some kind of integrity. I can't allow you to get on my platform. Now, if I, I on YouTube, listen, it, it depends on your, it depends on you, YouTube. It depends on who you are. You know, if I did it, probably nobody's going to care. But if, you know, like once again, if it, Moist Critical did it, if somebody who has a bigger platform said it, then there may be a problem. So I don't have a problem with them necessarily saying, and she didn't, to be fair, if you watch this whole interview, she let him talk for a while before he got to this point. And she even let him respond at the end. And when he got the chance to respond at the end, he went right back into, no, this is what's happening with this individual. This person sued me. Uh, I would sue them if they did this. It's like, you can't get on there and start talking about suing people or being sued in cases that haven't been solved yet. You can't do that because the other person isn't there to defend themselves. It would be, so I think it's against their integrity to do that. You know, um, 
even me, I try my best when I make videos when I don't have the other side of the story. I feel like I try to not beat down the person. That's why I tend to say the words, I'm against what they're saying, not necessarily them because they're not here to talk to me. But what they're saying, I vehemently disagree with. But, you know, I understand your emotions get a part, uh, get a uh your emotions get the best of you sometimes. It happens to me. You get passionate about something, and you say something you regret. And he was obviously passionate about what he believed to be true. So uh, before we go into that, I'm going to read the person who posted this, what they said about the whole thing, and give them their credit for posting this. This is the most astonishing interview. Grant Lennon has been vindicated over and over regarding the medical abuse of children by gender clinics. He has correctly pointed out uh, that central figures within the gender identity theorizing have sexual sexualized children. For the starters, John Money, uh, American uh, psychologist and psychologist from New Zealand who practiced at John Hopkins, considered the first to coin the term gender identity, gender role. Money believed pedophilia was a harmless sexual act, uh, sexuality. It promoted pornography as a means for young children to develop their sense of gender identity. Uh, identity. And this is the 1991 interview. Um, from way back when, and this is the person saying that's what John, Graham was trying to say. Now, this person who posted this is just trying to say what Graham was saying right was correct. And this person didn't say that Graham got cut off or anything. Maybe they did later, but as far as I can see in this tweet or X or whatever you call it now, they didn't do anything. Look at what is freaking trending. This is about iShow. Y'all know who it is. iShow Speed. Um, and some woman got on and says something about his, but I don't really care to talk about that. I don't really care for I show speed that much. He's just a young kid making videos. Nothing wrong with that. Makes a mistake. He's young, foolish, happens. All right, so I'll keep that there for you guys to read the rest of it. Now, now let's see what Rosanna Lockwood had to Sensitive say about me, what happened. Rosanna, Welcome back to Uncensored. Well, wrong video. Here we go. ...tonight by addressing my interview with Graham Linehan last night. It went out live, but we aren't repeating it. And that's not because of censorship, not because we're seeking to deplatform anyone. One of the reasons for Talk TV's existence is to hear from all sides of the argument. We don't hide from sensitive topics. We believe in free speech. We relish robust debate. But it's also important for us to stay within the parameters of tried and trusted principles around broadcasting. Now, others may seek to deliberately abuse or undermine those rules. We don't. We view what we do coming into your home each and every day as a privilege. And we take that responsibility very seriously and we'll continue to do so. Now, I have also received a great deal of personal abuse across social media over the past 24 hours. So there's a few things I'd like to make clear. I'm a journalist, but of course I have my own deeply felt personal views and they don't necessarily chime with everyone I interview or even everyone I work with here at Talk TV. Just ask Piers or pretty much anyone else. But no one here has ever tried to influence the way I work. No one's tried to censor my thoughts or my beliefs. In fact, they've only ever given me free reign to be who I am, uncensored, if you will. I'm in this chair doing exactly that. So I'll continue to challenge. I'm gonna to continue to call that hypocrisy, bullying, misinformation, wherever or whenever I see it. So let's keep debating. Let's keep discussing these issues, big or small, that really matter to the world. But for pity's sake, let's keep it civilized. Let me say this. If I was for any reason to be interviewed on something global or national, if I was on a Fox News or something, the way I speak here on YouTube and the way I would speak on there would not be the same. There's no way... I would stick with my beliefs, but they I wouldn't go as far as I go here because this is to my audience. But if I was doing that on if I was on national TV, I would not speak the same way. I, I would say, you know, if I was to say um, I guess trans, I do believe that sometimes they are really trying to influence the children and they're trying to push them into a certain agenda. I just believe that they're only pushing one way, but they don't allow other people to have speeches as well. They assume that when somebody goes against them, it's complete hate. And I would disagree with that. I would say something more like that. But if I'm here on YouTube, you're going to hear me get more passionate about it because I'm talking to you guys, you know, and it's a little bit different. This is this is um, the platform that YouTube is allowing me to use, at least for now, to say what I want to say. But I wouldn't get on here. I wouldn't I would be 
more respectful and not act like I'm not talking to somebody um, respectfully, you know? That's not my goal here. I get on here and I get more passionate because this is my channel, you know? It's different to me. But if I was on national news and I was talking about the same things, trust and believe I would talk differently. I don't think, and here's something I, I see that some people always try to do. It's one thing to want to get the word out, but you've got to learn to control yourself. Graham just got a little ahead of himself. You cannot always allow yourself to get overpassionate when you have the platform. Because if you do that, some people believe that when they think about free speech and stuff like that, they feel like anytime they get an interview, anytime they get a chance to be uh, in front of eyes, that they have to go off, that they have to show them that they won't be bullied. They have to show them this and that. Do that on your own platform. But if somebody allows you to come on their platform, you're going to have to show some level of respect. If they want you to refrain from something, um, that's fine. As long as they're not censoring you, meaning that if somebody asked me for an interview and said, I want you to get on here and I want you to say that you love trans people, then obviously you turn that down. But if they get on there and say, uh, we don't mind you talking about what you believe in, but if you could sway from maybe these words, then I, you can work within those boundaries. That's fine to me. So I don't think that Graham got censored because she was like, hey, you're talking about legal proceedings. You're talking about suing people. You're talking about people who aren't here defending themselves. You're calling them pedophiles. You're calling them criminals. And they don't they haven't been criminally uh, charged with anything like that. And you're just going to come out here and just call them criminals and stuff like that. That's kind of going too far. I don't ever try to call people criminals, especially if I don't know that that's true. Now, if I got on here and talked, to, like I talked about those policemen from Mississippi and Rankin County, I can call those guys criminals because it was a criminal case publicly out there. These men went to jail and they're going to be in jail for a good amount of time. Some of them only five years. Some of them are going to be in there for life. I can call those guys criminals. That's clear. But to call somebody a criminal just because I believe they're criminal is something I would not do on the national news. I think Graham got ahead of himself. He got passionate because his thing just got canceled. Um, you get heated sometimes when you talk to certain people. Maybe they have some. It happens to everybody. We see this on. I watch a lot of sports analysis show. People get heated. People get upset. So I'm not killing Graham for what he said, but I'm also not going against Rosanna here or I'm not going against Miss Lockwood here because of what she said. She she had a right to be like, hey, look, you're, you're talking about something that we don't do here as a journalist. You got to have something. You know, you can't just say that. For example, for you guys who know who are better, who know sports better, I'm sure a lot of people know who Stephen A. Smith is. If Stephen A. Smith gets on there, it says that Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey, what's, I, I'm freaking forgetting his name now. Whatever his name was. Uh, let me just, let's just say he got on there and said Patrick Mahomes. Right. Justin Jefferson. Let's say he got on there and said Justin Jefferson um, beat his wife. And I think he's a criminal and I think he's a terrible person. He should not be in the NFL. If there is no proof of him saying that as a journalist, that would be disgraceful. You don't know that to be true. That is not in the news. That is not public. That is not knowledge, and he has not been charged with that. You you would be allowed to talk about it if there's an accusation, but even then, they can't come out and flat out say, yeah, I believe he did it. You can't do that and then call yourself a journalist when you don't know what's truly going on. And even if you really know the story, it's not out there for the people to, you can't still come out and say, yeah, it absolutely happened until the man has been charged. That That's just poor journalism, in my opinion. We see it happen here on YouTube a lot when somebody, for example, somebody watches uh, a YouTube channel and they watch like two minutes of it. It's a 40 minute video. They watch two minutes of it and then start calling this person an idiot. They're stupid. They're dumb. They don't know that they don't do their research. And they just start saying stuff that you haven't even looked into the video or done any research to start calling this person an idiot. That's just poor journalism but you got young kids that watch these big streamers and they're like oh yeah good job it's like you didn't even look into the video at least look into it anyway that's my opinion on it let me know what y'all think i'm out